In this video, we are going to be going over the Call of Dragons developer Q&A number four. We're going to cover all of this stuff in this video, so stick around. Let's get it. Welcome back to another Call of Dragons video, and today we're going over the developer QA number four. Let's just jump right into this. So it starts off by saying over the past two updates, there's been a lot of discussion among the community regarding season two content and the war pet system. In this developer QA, we'll discuss season resets, war pet skills, improvements to controls, and upcoming additions to the gameplay. So the first question is when you begin Season 2, there's a lot of repetitive work that has to be done upgrading heroes and artifacts and playing through Dragon Trail and Alliance leaders and officers have to spend a lot of time and effort rebuilding their alliances. Are there plans to optimize the Season Reset in the future? The answer to this question is, with each Season Reset, we pay great attention to feedback from players and use it to access the long-term impact of season resets on the game with this in mind we will be making improvements to the season reset centered around two aspects personal development and alliances i like where this is going let's just kind of keep reading personal development part of this is in order to speed up early game development and make pve and war pet gameplay more rewarding we are considering changing to a partial reset for hero levels not resetting artifact levels at all and seizing the scrappage of arcane dust that's i like that uh i'm curious where we're going to be resetting the hero levels to um i have a feeling if i had to honestly take a guess they'll probably dump them back to 20 so you no longer have to cover that you know 1 to 20 gap to have your deputies with them uh, that would be my personal uh, suggestion and guess to what they're going to do. Love the fact that you're not resetting artifacts. I think that helps the early game just be a lot faster uh, in the grand scheme of things. Like it allows you to hit those bigger mobs and not take as many losses. But let's just kind of continue with this. Uh, we are also planning to increase the level cap of Darklings, Dark Creatures, and Darkling Forts and their corresponding rewards. Furthermore, when fighting in PvE, all players will receive a EXP in full rather than the old system where experience was granted according to the amount of damage dealt. In the late season, higher level war pets will respond more frequently. And to deepen strategic gameplay, we are designing a policy system that will change as the season progresses. What's more, your Dragon Trail progress will no longer reset when the new season begins. Instead, we will be adding new stages that will allow players to pursue higher goals when the new season starts. Okay, so a lot to kind of take away from this. Uh, I love the fact that we're going to be getting higher, you know, creature levels, darkling levels, fort levels. Uh, I would think they'll probably go up to about 27, 28 would be my guess. Probably uh, 8 and 9 Darkling Forts. Whatever, a couple level increase on each one of them. Um, I'm really kind of concerned about Dragon Trail progression no longer being reset. Uh, I think if they add 20, 30, 40 more levels every season, uh, that could be a good thing. But I do think they would have to kind of dumb down um, how hard they are. Uh, I know a lot of people can't get past 70, 75 ish uh, without T5s, and that's going to really hinder a lot of players if they're not kind of dummy down a little bit. Uh, so I hope they take that into effect. My suggestion would be to lower the difficulty of them uh, quite a bit. So the new ones that you're putting in, everybody has a chance to beat every season because this is going to be, be a big problem with getting the items needed to do your policies. Uh, higher level war pets uh, being respond more frequently is a good thing. Uh, We're actually going to be dropping a video probably tomorrow uh, on war pets and just doing a... Um, well, we're just going to be doing a let's talk. Let's just leave it at that. You'll understand during the video, uh, but that video will come tomorrow. Let's just keep moving on. Uh, what do we miss here? I think that's pretty much it as far as that stuff goes. We'll move on to the alliances portion of this. 
Uh, it says we are currently debating the feasibility of retaining alliances from previous seasons. At the moment, we can confirm that in the late season, we will allow alliance leaders to select their own starting region uh, for new seasons. Once this choice has been made, alliance members will automatically follow their alliance leader to the next season's map. We are also considering solutions to issues regarding alliance membership numbers in early season. We're sure you'll have plenty of questions regarding these changes, such as the specifics of hero resets, increases the increases to the PVE enemy level caps, and the number of new Dragon Trail stages, how to gain prestige, and other concerns. Uh, we are highly aware that any changes we will make will be have an irreversible impact on how players progress over the 70 day season. So we're going to need a little more time to test and refine these changes and iron out any issues that may arise. I think it is wise to say that it would be a very disservice to the player community. If these updates are rushed out, I would rather them take at least another season, make sure things are done correctly than to just push stuff on us. Uh, as they did with War Pets and the War Pet system being what it is that we currently have. Uh, I, I just I don't feel like they need to rush this stuff out. They need to make sure it's right uh, for the player community and to just get it done correctly. Um, as far as the Alliance stuff goes, I do think those are some really good changes. Um, of course, I you know if you leave the group, then you're not going to follow where it is, it's going to be more of one of those things that you're going to go into the starting region if you're in an alliance when the season closes. I think that's a really good change. Uh, it allows for to make sure everybody ends up in the right spot and people can't misinterpret Discord messages or in-game messages. Like, the one person selects and it's just good to go. That's a really good change. I like that. Moving on. Next question, will it be possible to see the start times for different phases of the late season, such as season summary, migration, matchmaking, and the beginning of the new season? Uh, the answer to this is in version 1.0.20. We have added a timeline for the late season, giving players great greater clarity when making future plans. That's a really good thing. I, they were mentioned this a little while back, that you're going to be able to see the timeline towards the end of the season. I actually extremely like that. It gives us a better understanding of what's actually happening. Uh, next question. Uh, will cross-season my server migration be introduced? This is a big question, and a lot of people want a real answer to this. Uh, and I feel like they do kind of give us a real answer. Uh, considering the differences in strength between players in Season 1, 2, and 3, we are current, not currently planning to add the ability to migrate between servers that are in different seasons. We are considering adding cross-season migration after Season 3 ends, but this plan is still in the early stages. We welcome any feedback players may have regarding the server's migration. Um, I think they give the best answer possible right here. Uh, they clearly are looking to add server migration so we can go to other servers outside of a division. I think this is a really good thing, and I think this is a really bad thing for this game entirely. Um, and the only reason why I say it's a bad thing is because of the fact that the moment you open this up, you're opening the door to completely kill servers. Uh, we already do that anyway. Like in our current division, we had two servers that were pretty much completely dead when they come into this season. So you're going to completely destroy that and servers are going to be crazy. You're going to start seeing server build, building and it's it's going to be nuts. But it's a good thing also because I know there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there that have friends and other servers that they can. They have absolutely no way of linking up with um, division wise. So this will be a good thing for that in particular. Uh, I do think that's another one of those. Don't rush it. Make sure you get it right. And not allowing you to cross season migrate is a great thing. A season three player should not be able to go back to season two. It would just be stupid in general. So take your time, Call of Dragons. Get it done right. Let's move on. Uh, the next question is pretty much going over the skill slots for War Pets. Uh, basically, they're saying 
We are not planning to make changes on how Warpath skills are learned. Currently, each time you learn a Warpath skill, it will randomly be a replaced an existing skill. If an empty skill slot is available, there is a chance that it may be used instead. However, we have discovered that the existing Warpath skills page does not explain this clearly. We have made improvements to the page that will be included in 1.0.20 update in November. Keep an eye out for the announcements. That is an absolute garbage decision because the Warpet skill system is absolute trash anyway. That's for the next video. We're not even going to discuss that anymore. Next question, will it, will you make it possible to claim Alliance Gifts in a one-tap click? They basically go on to say that they're not going to make it so you can one-tap click collect everything because they want... Um, they want Alliance members to take note of basically who's spending for gratitude purposes, da 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 whatever, but they are going to add a times 10 button, which will definitely speed that process up. Um, whatever, not a huge change. will make collecting those Alliance gifts a lot easier and a lot faster, so you're not individually clicking one at a time. Um, this next question is about multiple characters at once in a PC version. Uh, they are going to allow dual logins. Uh, but we'll closely be monitoring if players are, you know, taking part in action, actions such as rallies, gathering, resource assistance that affect the game balance. Uh, they will suspend access to their characters if it is found. And the devices, apparently. Uh, they're adding a union chat feature with the 1.0.20 update. Uh, that will come in November. That's a really good one. And then it goes on to explain or tell us the new gameplay and events that are coming. So the first one here, uh, in the next update, we'll introduce Behemoth Raids. All players will be able to take part in matchmaking and launch a raid against current season's Behemoths in a raid instance. Unlike Behemoths on the world map, Behemoth Raids will be easier to take part in, and players will only be able to deploy one region to the raid. Um, that's a pretty good change. Is basically an instance that's going to have more PvE things for us to do. Um, I think with like people that are in the Season 2 map would definitely enjoy having something else to do in-game. Uh, there also will introduce a treasure map event unlike existing gameplay where you first gather seven treasure maps, uh, map fragments to find the treasure. The event will grant treasure map fragments for completing quests, which can be pieced together to unlock clues that will lead you to the treasure's location more quickly. Gameplay details and event information will be included with the update, so stay tuned. Um, you know, that's just basic gameplay. The Behemoth Raids are definitely, definitely exciting. The treasure map's kind of so-so. Uh, we'll have to wait to get more news on that um, when they decide to give out more details. Uh, then the next question is adding new factions. Uh, they say they're in the early stage of the of designing new factions, but still a long way away from it. Um, the design process includes content such as starting heroes, combat units, and faction bonuses, as well as ensuring new content is compatible with existing factions. So we're still probably another season or two out before anything like that, and that is pretty much the wrap-up of it. Overall, there's some really good changes coming. Uh, there's definitely some big big news with the cross-server migrations. I think, as I said, they really, really need to take their time with this, uh, as well as taking their time with all the things that they're looking to change that aren't actually coming from, you know, coming with this next update. Most of these big, big changes are going to be at a later date, which needs to be that way. Don't rush it. Get it right. And the player community will be so much happier in the long run. But with that being said, we're going to wrap this video up. If you don't mind, please consider throwing a like on the video. Greatly helps me out. Consider subscribing to the channel if you already haven't. And until next time, see you out.